Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and quick comparison of the DeWalt uh, extended handle heavy duty construction and demolition utility pry bars. And I wanted to do a review of these separately just because they're uh, the new generation of DeWalt pry bars. And they're ones that you'll see in the stores and quite frankly as far as the prices are concerned, these are some of the most cost effective pry bars I've seen for their size and their quality. Now I did include a uh, standard 36 inch crowbar which is a big crowbar which would be the third type of bar that you might use for construction and even though it is a Stanley since Stanley Black & Decker, DeWalt, they're all part of the same family now I decided it was totally valid to include in this review and comparison. DeWalt really seems to be taking over these days. Their products are just everywhere. It's amazing. And sorry about the zoom. I, the camera, these are, this is a 40 inch pry bar. This is a 42 inch pry bar. That's a 36 inch pry bar. And the camera is just going to have to be so darn far away that they just look like little yellow lines. So this is going to be a little bit odd because, of course, they're slightly outsized objects. So we do have the, Stanley, the standard Stanley crowbar. And we could also, of course, call this a DeWalt because it is the same brand. Stanley's have always been pretty decent in the quality, and these are no different. Getting a nice 36-inch one will uh, pretty much cover most of the prying needs that you have, and they're great. Generally speaking, for construction duty, you have a nice little short hook so you can get things separated. And then on the back side, you do have the standard crow's hook. And the reason you have a crow's hook is just so you can reach around and actually get quite a bit of force on various fasteners. Uh, if you're pulling large nails, part of the deal with the crow is so that you could pull a nail and the crowbar would only get up to 90 degrees to actually get the nail to pull out. And that's part of one of the deals with the hook on them is so that you don't have to swing the bar all the way perpendicular or excuse me, parallel to the surface to actually get it to pull a large fastener. Now, the next pry bar, and this is the most unbelievable one, I will have the part numbers down in the description, is this DeWalt 42-inch pry bar. This thing has been really amazing. There's actually, this was the secret weapon to break the tire beads. I had reviewed those Harbor Freight uh, tire iron pry bars, and this is actually something where I actually I tied it through the holes in the rim and we're able to use this to actually break the bead very effectively. What I really like about this pry bar is it has a nice heavy thick beam and it has a nice 90 degree angle and I do, that's kind of hard to find is a 90 degree angle and uh, I've never really had any issues with this. Even as long as it is, it seems it might be a little disproportionately thin. I think it's only a 7 8 thickness. It is a very heavy duty, uh, high grade tool steel. Another thing that they do on this pry bar, we'll show on the other end, is they advertise it as pre-straining here, where they kind of upset the metal to make it a little bit more rigid at the points where there's the most b bending or the most force applied. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how well it works, but that is the nature of those notches. I do like this end right here, too, because this is a long, flat fork, so you can use this for pinching or for alignment purposes, iron working purposes, if you need it. And the really unbelievable aspect is this was $20 on the shelf. I think they may be $25 now, but it was just an astoundingly cheap price. Um, and so I absolutely had to pick it up. As far as any large pry bar, it's pretty undeniable. For the cost, $20 or $25, absolutely get one. It will pretty much take care of any prying needs that you have. Now what we have here is the DeWalt utility bar. This was actually far more expensive. This was like 40 bucks or something. And this is a much more contractor or constructs, construction specific design bar. They have this very convoluted forging on the head. This is designed to get around studs and dimension, you know, two by four, two by six, two inch dimensional lumber. So you can get a hold of it and actually pry it and wrench it out. It also has a nice fork for pulling nails and standard prying properties. One thing I was going to point out is the convolution. I mean, this is a very crazy forging here. But the way they upset it, uh, if this thing were to ever have any issues failing, I think it would be right here. Just because you can see that there is a stress concentration, a thinner cross-sectional area. And that's right where they made this protrusion, this bump. That bump, the idea is for it to kind of dig into the piece of wood when you use this pry bar to actually wrench out, say, a standard stud. 
but I do really like it. It is heavy duty, and I haven't felt any issues with flexing or anything on this tip, but I did want to point that out because it just seems like there is quite a bit of a stress riser, and oftentimes uh, these will get used to move around rocks and stones and all sorts of other heavy duty uses, and it may give you some trouble, but they do say lifetime warranty, no questions asked, so I'll go ahead and take their word for it. The other thing on the other end is this, and I really like this fork because they actually do this heavy duty forging where it has this hollow rib to really give it a lot of extra reinforcement on the foot. The foot is also, as you can see, at a 45 degree angle, so it's kind of, it's a compromise between 90 degrees and, of course, straight. And that's why it really works well in combination with this other pry bar, because this gives you the 90 degree and the low kick end down here. Or this one gives you a heavy demolition end, and then, of course, this side, the 45 degree. And I have to say, this is really one of the heaviest duty, one of the nicest pry bars I've seen for the construction trade. Now, the only thing I'll have, I do want to mention is that this fork and the way it kicks out is actually at 90 degrees to this head. So this head goes this way, and the fork kicks up this way. And it's really kind of hard to show on the camera. Maybe, no, it's going to be just about impossible. But the issue I've had is that it's twisted. It's about five degrees twisted. So if this is exactly flat, this fork end should also be exactly 90 degrees straight up, but it's not, and you can see it. It's actually tilted over like this. Not by much, but like five degrees is significant. As soon as you pick it up, you can see that, oh, it's tilted over. When you're prying with this end, you really notice it because this end is all kind of tilted a little bit wonky. If you're prying with using this end operationally to pull out a stud, it's a little funky because this side's a little tilted over. I didn't notice that when I had purchased it, and, you know, it's okay. I can deal with it. Uh, but it is a little bit frustrating and something I would recommend checking with these large pry bars is making sure they're actually straight. The other thing to check is the way they do the grind. And I'll have to admit, I did notice that on this one, is that when they do the grinds on these forks, they were real inconsistent. Some of them were terrible. So I did have to dig through about five of these until I got one that had a, uh, a grind and shaping on these different fork ends that looked nice and even enough. And actually, I had done the very same thing to this pry bar, but I just didn't consider that it would have been twisted slightly inappropriately. Anyway, that was just a quick review and comparison of the two DeWalt heavy-duty pry bars and, of course, their Stanley brother, a 36-inch crowbar. I really appreciate everybody watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.